thank you for joining me today on all of us here. It's a great day to see you all here. So let me tell you why we're here. We are here because we are all excited about our audacious future. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. yes. Better than that, because this is being recorded. <laughs> This is being recorded for some of the community members who couldn't make it today, our university community. So we'll record the very beginning, and we're going to record the report out. So let me tell you why we're here. We're here because it's a great day to be part of the Jaguar community and part of the Jaguar family. But more than that, as you know, we're on the cusp of building our great university to become a comprehensive four-year university in the acceptance of freshmen and sophomores in 172 days on August 22nd, 2016, when we welcomed the, our first class of first-year students. It's also a very great time when you think about this moment, this reflection, this changing point, to think about what our future is going to look like in the next 20 years. I've shared with you before that this institution will live long beyond our individual voices. But our voices together are the foundation that build a great university. And that's part of your role today, is to help us think and shape this great university for the short term in the next five years and for the longer term for the next 20 years. So as you sit here today and think about your role as founding members of our great university, it's also to think about not what we have to do today and not what we have to do tomorrow and not what we have to do next week, but what we need to do to think about ourselves in the next five years, the next 10 years, and the next 20 years. This is harder to do. It is hard work. It is a challenge to step away from our daily busy lives, and I know how busy everyone is. We have a very full agenda before us just to get everything we need to get done in the next 173 days. So I'm asking you today to take this uh, two hours that we have, two and a half hours together, and put that aside for the next 120 minutes or so and think about our future in a very audacious way. And to remember that there are some things that we are building here that we don't want to lose. And part of that is our agility and our ability to be responsive. My challenge for you today is to think about creating our mission, vision, value statement. And I encourage you to think about the documents that we have had before us and keep the best of what's working. And let's look at what we think about for our future and add those next best thoughts, your next best thoughts, into that system so that we can integrate that into our future. We have an entire uh, campus community invitation today here for the town hall. And you're going to hear more about this process. Through an RFP process, thank you, JJ, and your team, we selected a group of consultants to help us think through this. And I felt it was a, it's such an important opportunity for us that we wanted to bring in outside expertise, not to do the work for us, but to help us think through how to do the work in an organized, methodical way so that we have an end product that we've all developed and created together that we know has helped us shape our future so that we don't get caught by our own blind spots or our own thinking that might be narrow when we're asking everyone here to have a very wide lens about our future. And this is hard to do. So I felt it was important that we bring in outside expertise. I also felt it was important that we have a community-wide strategic planning committee. So I'm going to ask those members of the strategic planning committee who happen to be in the room today to please stand for a moment. You could stand if you're on the Strategic Planning Committee. So you see we have a good representation of individuals from around the university community. They were selected for a broad variety of reasons, but one of them is that they represent a wide, go ahead and take your seats, they represent a wide uh, voice across the university community. So there are faculty, there are staff, the governance groups, and our student body leadership. And this three days, we're in day 
two of the three days, it feels longer, we're in day two of a three-day process that includes a wide range of community leaders coming together. We've had external community members, we've had the University Advisory Board, the stakeholder groups, the Strategic Planning Committee, today a large town hall, tomorrow a meeting with superintendents and local constituents, the military groups, and our large student body forum. So it's intended to be as participatory as it can be. But it only works if you come together in these types of settings in the town hall to really lend not only the voice, but the laboring or of what it will take for us as we think about moving forward. A couple of things that I would leave you with before I introduce our, our consulting team is there are some important elements of what we've been talking about over the last 13 months since I've arrived here that I don't want you to abandon. So when you think about our great future and you think about a blank slate, that is important. But there are some things we don't want to lose. And one of those elements, in my view, is, is building this and becoming a national model for student and academic success. We've been talking about this. We've talked to the legislature about this. It's a large part of why we're being funded. And trust me, and you'll see this in the data, that every stakeholder group that we've talked to has not used those words, but have used words about the opportunity we have for success with the student population that we serve. And that this is an important element of what everyone in the country is trying to do. You've heard me say that before, and it was validated again in the last 24 hours by a multitude of groups. But I want you to think even bigger than that when you think about how does that national model look like. A couple of other things that you've heard me say repeatedly that I want to help you to think about as you shape your own thinking is that there are a couple of things that we do here that no one else does. And that is to embrace the excellence of A&M. Texas A&M is in our name because we are part of this incredible system that exists, that is recognizable internationally. Don't forget that the Texas A&M brand and the ex Texas A&M family is integral to what we are and who we are. So as you think about our future, don't lose sight of Texas A&M excellence and how we leverage that. The other challenge I would leave you with is think hard about our geography. We're going to ask you lots of questions about where do we fit in the marketplace? Where do we fit in a crowded marketplace in San Antonio? It's a great opportunity. There are some elements that you will be challenged to define that we have here at Texas A&M San Antonio that no one else really in the state has, but certainly not in San Antonio. You will be challenged to think about those elements. When I talk about it simplistically in the community, I talk about leveraging the A&M excellence leveraging our geography, leveraging all of the student success opportunities that we have here that may not necessarily exist somewhere else. You have many more ideas than I do. I don't have the corner on great ideas. So we need to work together on this ideation phase, which is what today is all about, to help us move forward in this process. So with that as an entree, I'm going to introduce uh, Dr. John Welty and Dr. Jolene Kester to step forward and describe to us how they see us moving forward and certainly introduce themselves, give you a little bit of their background and why we selected ASKU Pinson Group in moving us forward. So i turn the floor over to you. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, be with you uh, and to uh, serve the university community. Uh, first, let me talk just a little bit about uh, um, my background very briefly. I've been in public higher education all my life, uh, president of Indiana University of Pennsylvania for seven years, president of Fresno State in California for 22 years, at uh, New York, Min Michigan, and Minnesota prior to that. So uh, I retired two and a half years ago, and now I'm working with the Askew Pinson Center for Professional Development. Uh, and projects like this and other activities in public universities across the country. Let me introduce my uh, colleague, Dr. Julian Kester, who will tell you a little bit about her. 
Good morning, everyone. I, too, am really pleased to be here. And I must say, I've picked up a lot of the excitement that all of you have for this university, and certainly with all of the time we've spent with folks in the external community. There is um, just a lot of really passionate thought and attachment to this university already. As Dr. Welty said, I, too, have spent my professional career in public higher education. I started as a faculty member a long time ago uh, and uh, became a department chair and then an, an, an interim assistant vice president for academic affairs. You know, I did all of those things. Became a chief academic officer and closed out my career serving as 11 and a half years as president of California State University Northridge, which is in the Los Angeles area, about 25 miles north of LAX. I retired before John did. He had to retire after I did, I think, so because we used to sit next to each other at Board of Trustees meetings. Uh, I retired four years ago and quickly became involved in the Ask You Pinson Center, uh, consulting with other university presidents on a variety of topics, but doing a lot of this work in helping universities set a strategic focus, a strategic direction. So it's a pleasure to be here. We look forward to our time with you today. And we're going to be coming back several times, four more times over the course of the next month. So we may become familiar folks down, walking down your hallway. OK, thank you. And let me just uh, describe quickly what we're going to do today. At your table, the agenda for the meeting, I'm in just a few minutes going to talk a little bit about the process that the university will be going through over the next several months. And I actually should say that you're going to go through uh, because we need all of you participating. And then following that, we're going to ask you to uh, go to work. And uh, Jolene will, uh, there's a, on your table a series of questions. And she'll talk about how, what we want you to do with those questions. Uh, we'll give you some time to do that. And then we're going to ask you to report out and share with the rest of the group what you have uh, decided upon uh, and then as we're going along you've uh, if you brought lunch feel free to whenever you get hungry go ahead if you didn't get lunch outside you can sneak out there and get it if you need to make a stop down the hall that's okay we're just going to keep going so that we stay on schedule and uh, I do understand that some of you have to slip out for a few minutes to do one thing or another but uh, I, I recognize and I thank you for taking the time today uh, to be with us so let me talk a little bit about the process that uh, we're going to go through over the, in the next uh, several months. And that process will really be led uh, by the planning committee, the members of whom you just, uh, just met. Our role uh, as consultants is essentially to provide support, guidance, uh, to, as I mentioned to the committee yesterday, uh, challenge them. Sometimes we'll make them mad. Uh, that's OK, because we're going to go away. And uh, ultimately, though, the plan that you develop is your plan. Uh, and you are the ones that are going to have to uh, really implement that plan as we complete. So uh, I, I am envious of all of you, because you've got a great opportunity uh, as you start with the university becoming a comprehensive university uh, this coming fall. Uh, I also uh, empathize with you because I did have the opportunity to serve a, a new university in Minnesota many, many years ago. And I know it's hard work and it's not easy. But believe me, when you look back on what you accomplished over the next five years and thereafter, uh, you will be making major contributions uh, to this region and to the university. So uh, you've got a great opportunity. Uh, there's nothing that you can't do. Uh, it, it is, though, not going to be easy all the way along the line, but it also is going to be fun. So hopefully let me talk about some of the fun that we're going to have. Uh, essentially what we're going to try to do in developing the strategic plan is to cr go through a process uh, that really builds from your strength, promise, and opportunity uh, to create a strategic plan for the university for the next five years. Uh, and obviously, uh, some of your strengths are just beginning to emerge, but you'll identify those. You've got great opportunities ahead of you, and uh, that's really one of the neat things about the plan that you're going to be preparing. So uh, let me just quickly run through the uh, kind of the characteristics 
of a successful strategic plan. First and foremost, that plan is driven by a vision. And I'm going to talk in a minute about what I mean by vision and uh, perhaps give you some things to, to think about. Uh, secondly, it's very important that the leadership of your campus is engaged, and I can tell you that President Tante Matson is uh, engaged, as well as the senior leadership for the campus, uh, because uh, they will ultimately need to be the ones responsible responsible for leading implementation. So you've got some things to be ways a kind of a, a free opportunity to create uh, the the future that you wish to have. specifically there are going to be opportunities to react comment on the that they're coming up with. The plan process that we use will do everything we can to be studied planning. Uh, we're going to try to stay away from that and talk about stuff that jargon as it is in higher education, so we don't want to create additional and more uh, jargon for us to struggle with. The plan should be positive and optimistic. So in other words, as you think about the future, uh, try to think as positively and optimistically as you can. Obviously, there's always going to be little blips along the way that challenge you. But as we prepare the plan, at least at the outset, we need to be as positive as we can. The plan needs to be developed by you. And that's not an easy task. But uh, today is actually the beginning of the plan. All of your participation is extremely important if we're going to build a successful plan. Now, when we get through, that plan's not going to include everything that you want and every idea, uh, because we're, our goal is to really set some priorities and to try to build the steps that will be necessary to get to the vision that you create. The, the plan needs to be, uh, <clears throat> in, in addition to being developed by the campus, but also uh, include big ideas, and you really do have an opportunity to think big. As President Matson mentioned, to really think about the long-term future, and then we'll come back to talk about the specifics of what you need to do over the next five years in order to get that accomplished. Your plan should be a great time in higher education to be creative. There's lots of change underway. I think we're in one of those periods of significant change. So your ability to be creative is really a, that many universities, in fact, most universities don't have because they're bound by trouble getting rid of the chains of the past. Plan needs to be actionable. In other words, what we come up with has got to be clear so it's clear how all of you contribute. And it, even though we're going to have some big, broad goals, you will ultimately be responsible for implementing that plan in one way or another. And finally, plan needs to be measurable so that we know if we're accomplishing what it is that we set out to, to talk about. Now, what of a plan? First and foremost, in your core, what are those fundamental beliefs that you as a community hold to be very, very important? And that's the work trying to define them on those. Secondly, then move from there to uh, the vision for the university. It needs to really create a picture of what you want to accomplish. You're going to seek to become university, or you're going to seek to overthrow College Station, or you're going to become an engaged university serving the, trans the San Antonio region that transforms student lives, or you're going to become a polytechnic university that changes the future of this region. Those are all some examples of, of what a vision might be. They're not intended to be the vision you're going to come up with, but simply 
an example of what your vision and the kind of vision that you need to think about painting that big dream that you have for the future. Then from there we move to actually the, vision, or the mission for the campus. And that mission needs to answer four questions. Who are we? What do we do? Who do we serve? And very importantly, how are we different? So those, that mission statement that the committee works on is going to seek to answer those questions. A very important part of that will be how do you want to be different from other universities because it will be important if you're going to distinguish yourself uh, in, in the future. Then moving from there, the committee, with your help, are going to identify four or five strategic goals that will outline what are the most important things you need to do as a university over the next five years. Now let me caution you that in those goals, everything that, every part of the university probably won't be included. And there's a natural tendency to say if my office or my area is not included, this plan's no good. That's not true. These goals need to cut through the university be broad things that everybody will work on. President Matson has mentioned academic and student success to becoming a national model. I'm not what you're going to put in your plan, but I would guess that may be goals that emerges in some process. But that is an example of a goal, and in order to be a national model area, every area of the university is going to have to contribute. Some more than others, but everyone will have to contribute. Once we get those f four or five goals identified, then the next is to create or answer the question, how will we know that we've achieved these goals or that we've arrived? And those are what we call desired outcomes or objectives. And you'll come up with those, and then knowing that, uh, we'll, we'll need to go to work on now that we know what our outcomes are, our goals, what are the strategies that need to be accomplished in order to achieve those goals? So that'll deal with the what, who, and when. Specific things that relate to who's going to lead that effort, what the university are going to so, uh, Let me just, and I, I mentioned the importance of differentiation. We call it strategic position. So you, you will be going to challenge you to really think about how you want to be in San Antonio, in Texas, and in the nation, and to look at what you want to be, what you want to have as your image or brand uh, for uh, the future. And that will not be easy to do, but the committee will work hard on that, and they, you'll have an opportunity to comment on their work. Let me just touch quickly on the steps and kind of the timeline that we're going to go through. We've actually spent, started in February and early part of uh, March uh, getting started. We've been through a lot of data, gathered a lot of data. Uh, the committee has been appointed, gotten organized. We're now at the town hall meeting. That's in March up there. It's step two on the schedule. Uh, that will be followed as we go through the next couple of months. The committee will have a research subcommittee. They will begin to gather data uh, on the university. They will take all the information that we're going to gather over this three-day period and begin to look at that and to summarize that. And then the committee will go to work in March and April uh, to identify a draft mission, values, and uh, vision statement for the university. Uh, that will be shared in April, and we're going to come back uh, on uh, April 21 will be the second town hall meeting, uh, and you'll be asked to come together as we are today and to give us feedback on those draft state mission, vision, values, and also some other data that we're going to prepare on the uh, strengths of the university and possible goals. So you'll have an opportunity at that point to really uh, look at what might be those four or five major goals, and you will give us feedback on those in April. Then following that uh, feedback session uh, in May, or excuse me, late April and May, 
The committee will go to work on the desired outcomes, or in other words, how do we know when we accomplish these goals that we've established? And we will, just as you finish the academic year, we'll share those widely. I ask you to take a, a few uh, minutes or perhaps hours, not hours, seriously, minutes of your time before you leave for break, if you're going to be leaving this summer or uh, as you get through commencement, to give us some feedback on those desired outcomes. And then through the summer, this, and actually in April, we're going to appoint task forces for each goal that's identified. So some of you that aren't on the will be asked to serve, and you may want to volunteer to serve on those uh, committees. Uh, those groups will work through the summer, uh, and we're, we'll we're going to work out the specifics later on how we're going to do that, but to actually begin developing the strategy. Then when everyone comes back next fall, uh, either late August, early September, we'll, we'll work on the date yet, you'll have an opportunity to see what those strategies are, and then um, you will be able to comment and react to the strategies. The committee will then, in the month of September, move toward a final plan, and then the final step will be probably in October, the senior leadership of the campus, along with the leadership of the Strategic Planning Committee, will come together in a day workshop with Jolene and I, and our task will be to help that senior leadership actually lay out year by year what you're going to do in order to achieve those goals. They will also have the fun opportunity to figuring out how they're going to pay for it, and probably uh, are going to find out you won't be able to pay for everything, so we'll have to figure out a way to or move something else uh, forward in order to achieve the goals. But strategic plan for the university and uh, a, a guideline for the next uh, five years. Now, I'm going to really fast forward because uh, I've just said is one we talked about. Um, Step two is actually where we are now with the town hall meeting. Uh, today, we, as I mentioned, we'll move to step three, uh, and that is, will be research, a research committee that will actually gather all the data and make some sense. It will go on the web, on the site, and I should mention that that uh, website will be sent to you so that you, anywhere along the line, you can access the data that the committee is working with. and. Uh, You'll have an opportunity if you want to send something to the committee to let them know what you're thinking. You can do that. Then as we move into April, as I said, we'll have the next town hall where you have the opportunity to react to the draft mi vision, mission, and goals. And then uh, at that town hall meeting, we'll take the data that you generate and, uh, as I said, create cross-departmental task forces around each four or five goals. And those task forces will then go to work and actually determine what the desired outcomes. This slide just simply checks off where things will be at that point. We'll be coming up on uh, the month of May, and at that point we'll begin working on the desired outcomes or establishing the targets, and each of the task forces will be responsible. As an example, if you create a, uh, a task force, a goal around enrollment growth or student success, uh, probably some of those desired outcomes will be increased enrollment by X number of students by the year 2021, or uh, increase the graduation, or not increase, uh, create a graduation rate of 85%. How's that sound? That's a, probably a big stretch, but uh, that's an example of a desired outcome that you may uh, create, or you may have a goal around funding and that will actually spell out we seek to generate X amount of dollars from various sources. We'll publish those desired outcomes, as I said, in May, and at the same time we will start talking with the budget folks about the dollars that will be generated. For example, if you increase enrollment, that will increase revenue, uh, but we'll actually been, begin putting together the revenues that will be available to achieve some of the desired outcomes. And then at that point, we will have gotten all the way through to the desired outcomes and we'll be ready, as I mentioned, to come up on strategies. And that will be 
Uh, the next step that during the summer we'll work on those strategies through the uh, task forces that will be actually working uh, on them. And when again, as I mentioned, we'll be emphasizing big ideas uh, that work across organizational lines. Because if a plan's going to be successful, everybody's got to contribute in one way or another. Uh, whether it's uh, someone that keeps this campus looking beautiful, uh, all the way to those who will actually work with students advising them if it's related to a student's a student success goal, for example. Third town hall meeting, as I mentioned, will be in August, and at that point, we'll share the strategies, and you'll have an opportunity to react to those strategies, uh, and then we'll move to actually the review phase of the faculty senate, uh, all of the other uh, processes that you as a university community use in your shared governance to actually review uh, that plan. The, plan. the final draft plan will go then from the committee uh, to President Tiente Matson, and uh, that plan then she will approve after the, any consultation she has to have with the Chancellor of the Regents, and you will be ready to, as I said, go and actually get into the stakeholders meeting, which will be held in October, and actually get into the actual year-by-year uh, -year implementation strategies and the cost for doing that. So once we get to that point uh, this fall, we'll be into the nitty-gritty of actually putting the plan together. Most likely your plan will be on the web uh, so that it can be modified as you go forward, uh, but you'll probably come up with some type of a PR piece that everyone can carry around and keep in their pockets so everyone remembers what that plan is. And then there will be the process of formal approval by the regents. And then ideally, you'll have one big party or celebration. Uh, and believe me, the, I know the committee is going to be ready. And you probably will be ready, too, by the time you get to that point. But it really will be an opportunity to celebrate the great work you've done as a university community. And then once you have that celebration, it's time to go to work. And the important thing about the plan is that every year, uh, there's a review of the progress you're making on the plan that's shared broadly with the university community so that you have an opportunity to uh, see the progress. But also, there's nothing perfect in a plan. You're probably going to have to modify it a little bit along the way. So every year, you have that opportunity to make those adjustments. So that, very briefly and very quickly, is the process that we plan to go through over the next several months that you're going to go through. Uh, let me stop and see if anyone has any <clears throat> questions or comments before uh, we put you to work. Questions? Comments? All right, if I could have your attention, please. The way we're going to do this is I'm going to ask the, tab the three tables that had question number one to report out. Then we'll go to two. I'm sure that's shocking to you. <laughs> and question three and question four and question five. A couple of things that I would request of you. One is we're going to bring a microphone to your table so that the person reporting out will use the microphone. It will need a little bit of time to get around the room from to, so that we can get to each of the tables. Please just report your main ideas. In other words, be succinct if you can. Uh, get, the, get the main points. If you are a second or a third table on a question and you have the same idea as has already been reported, let us know that, but you don't need to restate it all. All right? And if you do, we will forgive you and appreciate your ideas. All right? <laughs> Then what we're going to do is John is going to go to each table after you have reported, and he's going to take your full set of notes. 
so that we're sure to get them. In other words, we're not letting you leave the room without your ideas on the paper for us to be able to feed back to the steering committee. Okay? All right, now there are three tables that had question one. Would somebody at each of those tables raise their hands? Okay, here, here, and here. So let's start over here. And you know, why don't you tell everybody your name? I, I think everybody, I don't know if everybody knows you, but tell, tell us your name. Okay, Tess, can you hear me? Oh, cool. Uh, my name's Jacqueline, I work down the hall in the marketing department, and we had question number one. In 2024, Tamu says, 15th anniversary, ideally, what would you like the university to be like? We would like to see enrollment at 25,000. We would like to have a Division I athletic team with an athletic <laughs> complex. We definitely like a Starbucks on campus. <laughs> we would like to be known to have a Tier 1 research university. We would like a standalone ROTC program. And we'd like to be known for science and technology specialties. Um, in addition, we'd like a more engaged and robust campus life, a standalone library, along with other facilities so, to support the students and to maintain plenty of parking. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's, let's go to this table here, right? Go ahead, please. Tell us. We'll see, hopefully. Here, just stand here so that I you, you stand. I yeah. Stand. I'm gonna make you come up front with me. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Art. Uh, so some of the things that we feel that the university will have developed by 2024, something that I called modern traditions. Uh, they'd be in the light of the A&M system, but they're gonna have our own San Antonio flair. Um, the growth, the recent and ongoing in the way of the academic programs, the graduate degrees, and of course, advanced facilities. We wanna have a diversified student life with inclusive programming, and of course, the competitive athletics that was mentioned before. Uh, an advanced, seamless student admission process, meaning we want to be the model that when a student gets onboarded through their matriculation, that other schools are coming to look to us at to say, how are y'all doing that? How can we do that here? We feel like we can, we can be a groundbreaker in that one. We want to have the most marketable graduates in the state so that when employers will see the A&M San Antonio degree, they're already going to know that this, this, student, this, this person is ready to go. They're ready to be in whichever field that we can pick. We think that's pretty audacious. And of course, we want to have a mo we want to be the model for technological advancement, okay? We want to be, try to be on that cutting edge and whatever it takes, whether it is something that is, uh, that we're having just on our campus or things that we're, we're producing for the world. We're hoping that that's something we can accomplish. Thank you. All right, the last table that had this question. Great, for question number one, I'm Eric Lopez, Dean of the College of Education and Human Development. Um, had similar responses as well, so didn't, we're not gonna repeat those. But uh, lab schools was uh, one suggestion. Be the go-to university, uh, daycare center on campus, uh, legacy uh, for community and alumni, and further development of partnerships with community and community colleges. Great, great. All right, those are great characteristics. I'll just say that they're uh, pretty congruent with much that we've heard from your external community, so that's great. That's great. All right, which are the, I gave question number two to two tables. I know that table over there, right? And that's not yours? Well, four. Oh. All right, you have two, and who else has two? All right, let's do two here. Yeah, come up to the front so that you don't have to stand with your back to some of your colleagues. Besides, it's lonely up here. <laughs> Okay, well, question number two, we had kind of a, a list of information for our table. Um, I'm going to start off with uh, the most diverse, inclusive university in the nation, um, along with different types of schools, uh, law school, nursing program, STEM, cybersecurity, uh, and being highly prestigious in these uh, schools as well. Um, we also wanted to be the goal to get an a and education of excellence in San Antonio. Also to have all our alums as the future leaders of the, of the nation as well. Um, and then being the highest graduate sought 
after into their fields and also to get some professional development for students, students, faculty, and students. And then lastly, we had um, a grander international experience for students, uh, local and outside of the nation as well. And that's pretty much all we have. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. As our group talked about what we'd like to be able to say but can't right now, it would really be this idea that students who come here feel connected, that we are part of family. Um, and so it's perhaps a little different focus than what we've heard, but the ways that we would go about accomplishing that is really by making ourselves the anchor within the community that links students, the businesses, everyone who's here within San Antonio, that we become the anchor that everyone ties to. Now, um, some of the other ways that we would go about that is by having really high quality experiential learning opportunities where students are getting excellent mentorship within that community. That's a part of that process of anchoring, that they're out there receiving that experiential learning, but then they're also, when they graduate, they have the knowledge and skills so that they're going out to get employed in the community, that they're staying here because they're marketable within our communities. We want quality teaching to be a priority. We want to know our students, and we want to know our students while they're here and beyond. Um, and I think that was really critical. And alumni ties with something that was talked about, and that's that knowing our students beyond. Even once they leave, there are very strong alumni ties here at this university. Great. Give those tables a hand. <laughs> All right. Uh, Tables that have question three. Would somebody at these tables raise your hand so that we know where you are? Okay, let's start over here. We're, let us get the mic to you, please. Your beautiful scarf. Oh, thank you. All right, good morning or afternoon maybe right now. Um, my name is Ashley Spicer Runnels and I'm the Assistant Vice President for University College. Um, our question was, well, it's number three and essentially there's a donor and we want to pitch an idea to that donor. And so our table had a lot of different ideas. Um, one would be uh, having them sponsor or donate money for a library or university center. Um, also leadership development type scholarships that would be inclusive to all students. So we talked about looking beyond just those top 10 students, but those mid-range students that may need that extra support who don't necessarily qualify for financial aid. Um, faculty and or chair endowments to lead programs, um, pay students to become fully engaged on campus. And so instead of having them work as student workers or even work off campus, having them commit to taking that 15 hours and getting involved in other um, ways on campus. Um, also research opportunities for undergraduate students, um, partnering with companies to provide internships uh, so those students could be workforce ready when they graduate. Um, also. Hiring an ADA officer to ensure that our campus is accessible to students and that we're a leader in that way. Um, and then two more things real fast. Um, building a program that has an emphasis on technology and or terrorism. There's more conversation behind that. But essentially using that avenue and then housing different disciplines and different programs underneath that so that we can become a leader and make that a niche for our institution. And then the final idea final one, is uh, we've been talking a lot about the national um, model for student success or academic and student success and so really defining that and then potentially creating a central office here on campus where our faculty and staff would serve as consultants um, and we would be the hub for that actual national model. Thank you. Thank you. Great ideas. How about, there was a, there's a table over here. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, you want me to go up here? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it feels better up here, doesn't it? It does it. Um, so my name is John DeLaRosa. I'm a student academic success coach and happy Texas Independence Day. All right, all right, all right, 1836. All right, so we came up with some ideas. Uh, our pitch was um, for, the, mouth, for the general gift uh, is to continue Senator Modler's dream to offer education on the South Side. Uh, offer opportunities for students who wouldn't normally come, uh, especially tied into the STEM programs that are developing here on the South Side with the school districts. Uh, let me see. Expand on research for uh, freshwater initiatives, and which in turn would 
uh, continue to promoting uh, tourism to uh, what was and is still an underserved part of the city of San Antonio. So we can go ahead and maybe have uh, something with Medina Lake or Medina River, uh, Leon Creek sort of thing. Uh, and then uh, offer international opportunities for funding to go uh, semesters and conferences abroad uh, and converse, converse, conservation efforts to develop um, more green space here in the south side of San Antonio and develop and support athletics. Hmm? That's it? Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Well, we'll bring you the mic. <clears throat> You're getting your exercise here today. It's okay. Hi, everyone. Um, Jack Ayers, faculty in English. Um, there's going to be some overlap uh, with the other two tables um, for sure, but I think that's a good thing. Um, our recommendations for a hypothetical donor fall into three broad categories. Uh, the first category would be um, opportunities to sort of expand uh, and continue the identity that we've established now. So um, opportunities to um, further develop our military embracing uh, identity, expand the Patriots Casa and those programs, build a family center uh, that would serve non-traditional students. Um, there's just a couple of examples. The second category would be um, programs and centers, initiatives that are currently under discussion. So. Um, uh, obviously, the water sustainability program, there have been talks about having an affiliation with charter school, um, and then also uh, discussions about a center for reconciliation and remembrance, um, cybersecurity plans. So support for um, all of the various initiatives that, um, uh, that have been identified. And then third, um, the third uh, category would be really sort of foundational areas, um, and these are some that, that have been mentioned before, but um, getting that infrastructure buildings, we talked about uh, a library, a, a physical library, um, and certainly there would be appeal for donors to have a library named after them, um, an honors college, and then also uh, endowed chairs. Great. Thank you very much. <laughs> the tables that are going to report on question number four, please. Can you just raise your hand so that we can see where you are? There's one. There's one. And I, are, there, are there only two? I thought there were three. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Let's go right here. I'm sorry. You were there. I shouldn't have sent you over, but good. In order to become a national model for student and academic success, what are the three most important things we must do in the all next five years? All right, years? so we're a table full of business uh, professors, so we're very analytical. Uh, the first thing that we uh, felt was important to do was to develop a framework for assessment and definition of what academic and student success is. Um, we've had, we've heard, seen some numbers, um, uh, we've heard some numbers that have been thrown around, but exactly what success is and how that's defined by different groups is, is an important um, part of that, that framework that we need to do. Um, the second one is provide ac an academic a comprehensive student services, um, whether that be uh, tutoring or um, um, all kinds of things that you can, um, and whether that's, uh, I think that also probably deals with things like athletics and uh, just a whole student, student life. Um, and then lastly, um, our idea was we need a full comprehensive um, faculty support and de professional development um, center to make sure that um, our faculty are up on the, the um, uh, most current research, uh, best practices for achieving student success Thank and you. academic success. Thank you. Thank you. Then we'll go over here. All right, so I'm Tim from Military Affairs, and our table was comprised of somebody from every, almost every department on campus. So we have a little diverse uh, idea here. So number one was to um, get a big tech company or a couple of tech companies to come to campus and help us develop technology and curriculum that will help create job-ready graduates perpetually. Like, so as technology changes, the, um, the curriculum and everything changes as well. So one of our ideas was like Google still looking to come to San Antonio. Well, let's give them a reason to come to San Antonio and then help us have like the Google Technology Center or something on campus. Um, another thing is to engage all students in meaningful co-curricular activities. So sports, rec, Greek life, and community service. 
Um, we are on the south side of San Antonio. There's a lot of service that needs to happen across the, across the freeway over there. Um, and VA resources for all the military embracing students that we will hopefully get here on campus. Um, and number three, engage K-12, K through 12 um, students and districts statewide and like the TEA to help make students more college ready when they get here. Um, and a couple other uh, meetings I've been on on campus, you know, we have 4.0 students coming to campus that are really 3.0 students. So we need to try to get that better happening at the K through 12 area. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> the other table, there you go. Please. Good afternoon. I'm Lloyd Butler from Payroll Services, if most of y'all know that. But, um, hi, Dr. Madsen. How are you? Good. I'm really feeling the pressure right now. Um, we had question number four, and we, to echo what Dr. Hurley said, I think our table and that table were on the same brain wavelength. Yeah, we were watching each other. Um, increase graduation rates without sacrificing academic quality. <clears throat> Serving the student holistically, academically, career and professionally, psychologically and emotionally. Um, being responsible for success from pre-enrollment to post-graduation. And conduct appropriate assessment and research to identify and document areas of student success. So that's what we have for question number four. Thank you very much. All right, question number five, which could go on and on and on and on. But nevertheless, there are two tables that have question number five. They are back there and back there. Okay, let's start with you, please. For question number five, um, some of our issues that we came up with were, of course, tuition costs. Um, our university is proud to boast that we have some of the lowest tuition in the entire state. Will that model be able to continue here in the future as we continue to grow and expand? What changes will, that, will we have to implement to remain competitive? Housing, or lack thereof, was another issue that was brought up. Transportation, parking, and also being change agile. Um, when work trends have a tendency to change. What, how agile will our uh, university be to uh, continue to produce students that are workforce ready? Thank you. Way over in the corner. And she's going to come up here with us. Thank you. Hi, I'm Cheryl LeGraw, the Director of Student Activities. And so a lot of our comments echo some of the things that have been said in the other four questions as well. So we looked at aging population and how are we dealing with having older individuals around and how are we adjusting to that. And that included student enrollment, the fact that people are coming back for second careers, and how are we making our university in a position to deal with the second career um, individuals that are coming back. Um, single parents, which has already been spoken about a little bit, and child care. So how are we handling that is one of our challenges. The technology challenges, looking at financial challenges to the institution, the infrastructure. Are we prepared to train our, stu train our students in how to use technology? A lot of times we think that students come and because they know how to surf the internet or play games, that they know how to use other resources related to technology, and that's not often true, but what's the infrastructure for how do we trade them once they get here of how to use all the technology resources that we're making available to them. Military population was already been spoken of, um, globalizing, and San Antonio becoming a more global city, and so how do we adjust to be a university that responds to the global demands of the city? And then finally, our other competitors here in San Antonio, including UTSA. Thank you. So let me just make a, a side comment. I've never done this where every table did it, every reporter did it succinctly and fast before. So give yourself a round of applause. I, 
I think this is the seventh strategic plan that I've worked on. So, I mean, give yourself another round of applause. I mean, this is really amazing. So great ideas, everyone. Again, what we're going to do is we're going to take your ideas, we're going to prepare them in a raw form. So there will be a document that the strategic planning committee gets that's just essentially all of your ideas. Then as well, we're going to look at your ideas next to the ideas of a large, of a large number of other groups that we're meeting with. And we're going to do a little bit of integrating ideas and thoughts so that we can provide those to the Strategic Planning Steering Committee for their consideration. And then they will begin to use all of this data to work first on vision, values, and mission. But simultaneously, they will begin to look at various pieces of research and a lot of this data about what the university needs to focus on in the next five years. And from that, in April, you will have presented their drafts on vision, values, and mission, as well as the strategic priorities, or if you want to think about it as goals. So uh, the next time we're together, you will have drafts from the Strategic Planning Steering Committee in those areas. So I thank you very much, President Matson. Well, again, I, I want to thank you for rising to the challenge of thinking bigger. There are definitely some audacious ideas that were presented across all the tables, and the, I can tell the conversation was filled with uh, buzz and energy. So now the hard work begins for the Strategic Planning Committee, those members who are still in the rooms. I know some had class. Uh, this is a, a big opportunity for us. And as I mentioned earlier, I've had the opportunity to hear from external community citizens pretty much all most of the day yesterday and this morning. So a lot of what we're talking about in your lens is aligned with some of what we're hearing from the community members. The big mission for the Strategic Planning Committee, however, is really to define our niche and to take all of this information and really begin to define what is our niche in San Antonio, in Texas, in the world, and how do we put all of our big ideas and, and even some that may not have been mentioned today to the forefront so that we as community citizens, university citizens, understand our roles. I think we have a very clear understanding of our responsibilities to graduate students. But there are a lot of students coming to us in the state of Texas, really around the country, but in our state in particular, that are coming from homes of poverty. We know this will continue to be an issue, and we know that we are doing this well now. We need to be doing it great to serve the students in the quantities in which they are coming. And the Texas Coordinating Board has very strong data around this metric, around this demographic, and what it will mean to institutions like ours, where many of your ideas that you expressed and reflected on about uh, people coming to us to study how we're doing this, that we have, I forgot which group it was, it talked about this, comp it was right here, arts group, it talked about that comprehensive uh, center for how a student comes onto the campus and how they leave and that others are coming here to look at that. A lot of those types of ideas will involve serving this unique population that we serve. And those are really important life-changing missions that we're doing here. So I'm excited. I'm excited about the idea as we look out the window as we leave here to think about uh, fields and courts where our athletic programs will be participating. Great ideas. Uh, and we, we're already seeing the remnants of that outside with the uh, play field that's been created in the last few weeks. So things, you're right, will move fast. But we need to make sure they move fast and strategically and in alignment with what we're trying to do. And so it's conversations like this that start to move us in that direction. The hard work begins. When we see each other in April, it'll even be more 
uh, comprehensive as we look at a first cut of mission, vision, values, and, and the first draft of goals to help us keep moving forward. So I thank you for your good ideas. I thank you for your uh, positive energy and your commitment to our students and your commitment to our university. So have a wonderful day. Um, Dr. Welty and Dr. Crester will be here if there are any questions. They have other meetings scheduled throughout the rest of the day. There will be a website up as was referred to many times and I'll make sure Non gets that out as part of the communication strategy so that you can all be engaged in the process as we move forward in a very quick pace. So thank you very much. Have a great afternoon.